I think what, what um, you're not getting, I, well, I think if I understand you, is that the person who is now our 0.5 assessment will continue to be 0.5 assessment and pick up possibly the 0.5 of seed or one of the other 0.5s. And the person who will be the world language department head will come from the teaching teaching teachers at the high school. One of the world teachers, language right. teachers will right. be the department head. Teaching. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I think we all got down. Right? Yeah, this is the third time around. Well, it may be that the word new is what is uh, prompting some of the questions. When in fact you have existing people that you're, let's say, reassigning. So right. it's the positions that are new, not the people. Right. So the word new isn't serving us well. Okay. Um, I would like to ask about the uh, the coordinator of this the, I'm sorry the grant writer and administrator um, it says non-certified would that person be a member of the collective bargaining unit or would, no that that would not be my thought um, this would be one of those non-affiliated positions um, I'm sure that we have people in town who are Great writers and would uh, would do that job. I'm looking for that to be a full time job um, for someone um, who would uh, would do that. It would not be a, someone in a, any of the collective bargaining units. It would be an additional position. So more than likely, that in fact would be a, a net gain of a person coming in and from outside the existing organization. Right now, we have an administrator doing that position. Right. right so I'm sorry. It would, I, so it wouldn't not announcing his retirement. I'm, I'm just meaning I thought he wasn't going to. No mind. <laughs> I, I, I understand that he confused everybody, but I think I got it. So we, we would be hiring from the outside for that, yes. Okay, Ms. Bush. Um, I just want some clarification on the one-year seed position, seed evaluator. Um, if I understand correctly, the first year is the year where everyone has to be evaluated. In the future years, um, can you explain why the seed evaluator probably would not be needed? Um, right now, no, I can't. Um, I'm saying this is definitely for one year, uh, at least. Um, but one year right now, we know next year is going to be huge. After that year, it goes back to a similar cycle to what we have, because everyone has to have a baseline evaluation where they truly are rated one, two, three, four. There are four different de descriptions there, and um, and then people go through the cycle based on where they are. Um, on that, so it, it will uh, get much, uh, there will be fewer observations and fewer uh, write-ups and everything every year <coughs> to do. So we expect it to be much less in the following year. So it's a possibility that it could just be a one-year position. Right. Right. right now that's what we're thinking. Okay. Because there's, what I'm trying to get is an explanation that there is a motivation for just one year, so it's not going to mushroom into year after year after year. I, I would be surprised, but again, seed is a surprise. So it always is. We, we don't know, um, but that right now, looking at that, we know next year is the big year. Thank you. Yes, sir. Will these changes work out to um, like administration or who, whoever you would meet with to discuss this? Yes. What kind of feedback did you get? Um, change is difficult. Um, some people realize that we do need some change and need to move things closer. Um, I don't think the administrators are, are happy overall in terms of, of this because it's we've had six coordinators for a long time um, doing the work and, um, and there's a, a comfort in the way we've always done things. Um, I'm looking to get the work again, flatten that hierarchy, get it closer to the teachers. Um, that's not my, my motivation is not uh, anything against the work that's been done or the people in positions. Uh, my motivation is truly to create those teacher leader positions um, and get the work closer to the teachers um, who are doing the work.
Mr. Kim. The Director of Business and Finance, is that within the scope of this discussion? Certainly. Okay. If I could direct my question to, to Michael. Are you certainly gone through a lot of change in, in your uh, area of focus. Uh, what we're looking at here, is this the your envision or do you have something else in mind that you're looking to uh, implement that we should know about? Through the Chair, uh, note that at this point the positions as stated in the uh, organizational chart are where we would like to be. Obviously we're looking at developing and growing staff within the roles, but uh, this is uh, by structure, position structure, where we want to be. Do you anticipate housing them all in the uh, central administration building at this time? Uh, there's, you know, with the construction going on, are there going to be any changes uh, of the position's function outside of the building that you anticipate? Do you, Mr. Chair? No, sir. Okay. Any final discussion? Yes, sir. Do you anticipate? Uh, you have to rewrite the alliance information. Do you anticipate asking for teacher coaches going forward? Uh, I think that, that of course, the principals would like more, but um, I think where we are right now with teacher coaches is um, is a good place. I would like to continue that in the next alliance grant. Um, we still have not received definitive information uh, from the state because, of course, their budget hasn't passed. Hopefully ours will be passed before then. I, I don't wish for something else, but we would know um, no more as soon as the state budget has passed. Right now, um, we are supposed to get that $671,000 again uh, next year. But in the budget uh, that the governor has proposed, there may be additional funding on top of that for the Alliance Grant. And so if that is the case, um, then there would be a, a part two of the grant. So we would continue on everything we've done in the first year and add other initiatives to that if there's additional funding. So, so your plan is not to, be, but to just move forward with what you've been doing? With, what with the 671 right, right now, right, based on, that's what they expect us to do. Um, we can look at that, we can change it a little bit, but to do something for one year and then do something entirely different for another year doesn't make any sense. So you would expect to maintain the teacher coaches where they are and consider adding more if there was additional funding? No. I, well, that could certainly be part of the discussion. I, I haven't discussed that. But there may be additional funding, and right. so we may do other things. Um, well, we've talked about the mathematics interventionists. We've talked about all day kindergarten if they, you know, we end up going there. And we're not sure how much money it's going to be and what it would cover. So we would be looking uh, further on. It can be supplies and things. Uh, if we need more early literacy intervention kits, those kinds of things. So there's a lot of things out there that are research-based, and we would be looking to the state to uh, give us feedback on our grant, on the results of this year's grant, and uh, input into next year and direct. Is the effect of the teacher coaches measurable? Um, it, it, right now, it's anecdotal. Uh, last year, they gave the board a, uh, a report. Um, this year, they're actually in process. I've read the first draft of it. Uh, they're in process of doing that. Um, so, so, yes, it's measurable in terms of teachers that say, wow, I, I could never have done this before. Um, can we do one-to-one -one that the... Um, the rate of literacy is much higher in the third grade. I'm not sure we're there yet. Uh, if you look at some of the kindergarten scores uh, compared to last year in mid-year and this year in mid-year, we're much, much further. And we do have a person devoted to those eight kindergarten teachers uh, who's going doing literacy to all eight kindergarten teachers. So that's the only change from last year to this year. So I would believe that that has something to do with it. When you last year you had 22% of students being able to achieve at a certain level, and this year it's 8 
the time, at the same time of the year. Uh, where is the uh, work that uh, the transportation contact had with the bus company in the <coughs> positions that I'm looking at on the chart? I mean, who's in charge of transportation? Mm -hmm. The logistics coordinator? Okay, so what? Okay, so the, the, what Betty came with? The some transportation of her, some part, of her correct. duties is within that? Yes. Okay. Right. Any other discussion regarding this motion? There's currently a motion on the floor to approve the central office reorganization as presented by Dr. Conway. There's no other discussion. I'm going to bring that motion to a vote. By a show of hands, uh, I'm going to ask all in favor. And those opposed? Oh, one opposed? And the motion does carry. Item 5.9, uh, report from Board of Education Liaisons. Is there anybody who has a uh, report this evening? Sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Sorry, 5.7 is where I need to go. And this does need to be untabled. Mr. Percy. We'll move to untable item 5.7, the approval of minutes, or uh, the minutes from February 25th. Motion to untable. Is there a second on the motion to untable? Ms. Fisher? A motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call the motion to a vote by show of hands. All in favor? And uh, that's unanimous. Motion is uh, the minutes are now untabled for after Mr. Percy. Make a motion to approve the February 25th, 2013 Board of Education minutes. I have a motion to approve, Ms. Fisher. Second. A motion to approve and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, by show of hands, all in favor? And that's your minutes. My point is the honor roll letters to students. Thank you, Mr. Holt. Um, we had a question last time about how honor roll letters are sent to students from the mayor of Vernon. Uh, three year, about two and a half years ago, I discovered um, that this was happening. And uh, at that point, apparently, names and addresses were being sent um, to uh, the, the mayor's office, and the mayor would uh, merge those, send a letter, sign those, and, and send them off to the students. Uh, I question that uh, because the board did not have a directory information policy. They had not defined what was directory information for students, what could be released with or without parent permission. Uh, so at that point, the uh, mayor still wanted to do that, and so what we would do, <laughs> the list of students who make the honor roll is a public list. Uh, parents can have their child removed from that list. But in general, if you make the honor roll, your name gets in the paper. So um, what we do did then and continue to do, even though we have an update, um, we continue to do is we supply uh, the mayor's office with the list of names. The mayor merges those letters and signs them with just the name of the student. And then that comes back to the school, both the high school and the middle school. They are um, put in envelopes with the addresses and <coughs> sent. And then we send a, an invoice to the town hall. Uh, our last invoice, I have to have a copy of right here. Uh, the last invoice was uh, VCMS was $168. Rockville High School was $186. So about $354.76. So um, I'm guessing approximately $1,400 over the course of the year, and the town hall remits that um, to our um, to the school system. However, 